I want you all to close your eyes. Now, imagine you're on a vacation in Antarctica, where it was just 65 degrees last month. Just you and your family. Nobody there to bother you. Now imagine you're back here in Florida. All hurricanes are now Category 5 or more storms. Imagine the damage that could cause to your community or your family. Now finally, I want you to imagine a world where millions of people are living without water as all the lake beds along the equator start drying up. These countries becoming just an extension of the Sahara Desert. You can open your eyes now, but this is what our future holds if we continue down this path of negligence for Mother Earth. Sea levels are rising. Since 1880, our oceans have risen more than eight inches, and just three of those were in the last 25 years. The effects of this rising ocean are being felt by nations all around the world. In Bangladesh, they're losing an area the size of Manhattan to the rising ocean every single year. This phenomenon is causing more than 700,000 people to be displaced. And in Mozambique, they just had the nation's worst cyclone in history causing more than over 100,000 people to lose their homes. But the effects of the rising ocean aren't limited to these far away countries. They can be seen right here in Florida. The annual report from the Virginia Institute of Marine Science has stated that sea levels are on a rise along all locations on the Atlantic and Gulf coasts. That's us. In Miami, every time there's a high tide, they face constant flooding. This water rises up from out of the ground, mixing in drinking water and wastewater, creating a knee-high flood of feces-infested water along roads and homes. As you can imagine, this makes life pretty miserable. And just a few years ago, we got hit by Hurricane Irma. The storm caused the most flooding we had seen in over 150 years. And even here in Jacksonville, we faced $85, oh, $85 million in property damages. The climate crisis is starting to get out of hand. And if we continue to do nothing, there will be nothing to stop it. However, there are solutions. Plans like the Green New Deal and the Paris Agreement make promises of successfully combating climate change. They do this by implementing policies such as reducing the amount of carbon emissions we put out by changing our fuel source from fossil fuels to solar and wind. But there is a problem with these plans. They do not take advantage of new and better technologies. New technologies such as next-generation nuclear reactors or biofuel processing plants using algae to create ethanol are not getting enough attention, even though they could be very important in our fight against climate change. Other than changing the way we get our energy, there have also been plans to directly take this carbon out of the atmosphere. There are many ways to do this, the most popular of which are mass planting trees, or creating machines that will take this carbon out. Ethiopia took the first route. They implemented a plan called Green Legacy, which planted over 350 million trees in just one day, while other countries such as the US or investors like Bill Gates have invested in technologies such as these giant fans that will suck up the carbon from the atmosphere and store it. And while these technologies are great, I believe there's a cheap and easy alternative right in front of us. Algae is my proposed solution to climate change. Now I know what you're thinking. Algae? That green stuff in my pond? Yes, 
I'm talking about that green stuff in your pond. Specifically, a species known as giant kelp. You see, algae is great at capturing carbon for a number of reasons. First, algae is 100% photosynthetic, which means that it can use all parts of the algae to capture carbon and use it to grow. Next, algae can grow extremely fast, reaching its peak within just four weeks. And finally, for every ton of algae grown, there are nearly two tons of carbon removed from the atmosphere. All these factors added up to make algae into a great tool for combating climate change. But algae is not without its disadvantages. If grown too close to the shore, algae can harm local biodiversity, or if grown out of control, these algae can cause harmful algal blooms that create toxins that can harm us as humans. At my nonprofit, Artfully Green, we are working on solutions around these problems. Recently, I read an article about Asian seaweed farmers who, in order to get around strict agricultural laws, they needed to grow their seaweed far away from the shore. You see, seaweed, like giant kelp, need to be grown on something. Their ingenious solution was to put these ropes out into the ocean and plant seaweed along these ropes. After four weeks, they would pull these ropes back in and harvest their seaweed. There are many benefits to using this technique. First, it creates an ecosystem where the algae is grown. This increases biodiversity where it was previously impossible. Next, and most importantly, this technique allows for the algae to be grown far away from the shore. This minimizes the risk of a harmful algal bloom and harm to local biodiversity. But I'm not here to tell you that algae is our definitive only solution to climate change. But I do believe that finding a new use for this old enemy, rather than using the methods of yesterday to solve the problems that we face today, will provide us with a better opportunity in our fight against climate change. And I believe that algae is a good first step for humanity. Thank you. Thank you.